G'day, welcome back guys. Kurzgesagt just put out a new video, why aliens might already be on their way to us. It's right up my alley. So if you're new around here, my name is Dylan. I just put a PhD in physics on hold to create some fun things. One of those things, my AI project, AI my interior is now out. AI my cars is really close now. We are so close. So all you got to do is take a picture of your room, you upload it to my site, and you can turn it into any interior design style you want in like 30 seconds. It's still currently free. It's not going to be free for much longer. So come check it out. Anyway, let's get back to the video. The universe is magnificent and vast. Hundreds of billions of galaxies. It's been a while since we've done this. I'm excited. It's trillions of stars and even more planets. If even the tiniest fraction are habitable, then the universe should be teeming with life. And yet we see nothing, only vast emptiness. Well, we've barely looked. The answer to this riddle could be as exciting as it is creepy. We are early, born before almost all other life. Since most stars actually formed more than a billion years before the sun, it is possible that other technological civilizations uh, predated us by the amount of time needed for their devices to get to us, to reach Earth. It is feasible that uh, Earth has already been visited by aliens before in our prehistory. But very soon, this may change. Not only might aliens appear, they could quickly surround us. An irreversible competition for the universe might be about to begin. Did you guys see the uh, paper that was put forth by uh, the Harvard scientist and the head of the Pentagon's UFO office that raised the idea that an alien mothership could be lurking in the solar system and just sending out these little, you know, like little dandelion seeds to explore the planets within. And yeah, they showed this as completely feasible. You know, these little little probes send back information. This it really could be happening. Astronomers wouldn't be able to see the uh, spray of mini probes or dandelion seeds because they just wouldn't reflect enough light for like the existing survey telescopes to pick up. We could make stuff today that could withstand the perils of, you know, interstellar radiation. And you could load these interstellar starships with artificial intelligence that could allow them to self-repair or even reproduce. Just give them the right knowledge of things like 3D printing, right? And you just use machine learning to allow them to adapt to new circumstances without even any guidance of their from their creators. I think the fact that we could already actually do this right now, not just conceive of this, Suggest to me that why wouldn't other civilizations, advanced ones, have already have done this in the past? We wouldn't necessarily be able to detect these. I'm not saying they're here or anything like that. I'm just saying it's probably fairly common. Even if they were here, I don't think we would know. While this video is based on scientific papers, we're presenting interesting ideas based on little data and lots of extrapolation. So take them with a grain of salt. Okay, we need to look at three essential questions. Call it scientific speculation, if you will. Questions to understand the galactic competition. One, how fast can bacteria build spaceships? To become a star-faring civilization, life as we know it needs to master a number of very hard steps. It starts with dead stuff turning into the building blocks of life. I actually saw some news last week. Uh, some Aussie farmers were claiming that <laughs> the cows have been mutilated by aliens. Apparently, it was the only reasonable explanation. Poor cows, for one. and uh, But two, it, it, it actually is a really... I was reading into the story. It is really weird. The uh, All the organs of these cows have been removed, and there was like no blood or anything left. That's pretty weird. Apparently with surgical precision, nonetheless. Now, it's probably more likely just some sick humans, of course. Um, but, you know, with all the Pentagon stuff recently, who knows? Then it needs to organize into self-contained cells. Those cells have to learn to work together to form multicellular organisms. This keeps going until complex creatures with big brains learn to use tools and language. I like how they're kind of visualizing cellular automata. If you don't know what that is, go have a Google. ...to be formed from cultures that value progress and technological development. And then they need to actually venture out beyond their home planet. Don't miss the opposable thumbs. I think that might be the most important step. Who knows how smart those big whales are in the ocean, okay? They might not be able to do a damn thing because they don't have thumbs. 
I laugh, but it's kind of tragic if you really think about it. What happens, you know, in 10 years, 20 years, we, AI now decodes what whales are saying to each other, or even dolphins, and this whole time they're being like, fuck these guys, man. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they have some kind of really complex language and they're just as smart as we kind of are. They just can't do anything about it. They can't build things because they don't have thumbs. Imagine if you put a human mind in like a big whale body and all it could do is swim around the ocean and it couldn't do anything else because it doesn't have arms or thumbs. On Earth, life appeared basically as soon as the oceans formed. But then it took 2 billion years. Which basically means life is probably everywhere in the universe, right? If, you know, the Earth we only think is about 4.6 billion years and then we now think ev uh, there's slight evidence for life popping up around 4.1 billion years ago, almost immediately, right? And you, you might say, well, that's not immediately, but you got to re remember that first 500,000 years was completely completely inhospitable to life it wasn't even it shouldn't be possible for life to exist then all right and when it became possible for life to exist it almost just popped up immediately that suggests life is going to be everywhere where it's fucking possible and guess what we're finding places all around us that look like the you know it's possible for life to thrive is to make in our own solar system and we're about to go visit it juice is about to launch tomorrow actually uh jupiter's icy moon explorer on an uh what, what's it? ariane 5 rocket um that's going to be exciting and that's going to ex it's heading to ganymede uh, around jupiter it's also going to have a look at uh, europa so who knows what that from find. single cells to multicellular organisms and two billion more for us to appear i know i'm pausing a lot i'm sorry guys yeah that's the big step all right the multicellular organisms for some reason it took a long time to go from single cell simple life to complex life like us you might not be aware but plants animals they've only existed for about 500 million years but i, I think it's about 500 million to 750 million years um and then fungi is actually a little bit older about a, a billion years so just think about it what was before plants and animals right there was no green it was just dirt, rock, and bacteria, and fungi till about a billion years, and then before that, no fungi. So what I was getting at is that could be one of the great filters. You know, you might have heard this idea of big filters for civilizations. I think they might talk about it, so let's keep going. And space travel developed super quickly, though. Do things always take that long, or was this actually exceptionally fast? Also, passing one step does not mean the next one is guaranteed. Multicellularity okay. evolved over Peak evolution right there. There's only one species that builds spaceships. We don't know how many steps life needs to pass and how long they take to give rise to a technological civilization, but there are probably many, and it's likely that on trillions of planets, life has been trying for billions of years. Since we don't see any other technological civilizations out there, it might well be that we are a rare exception. We might be among the first, or even the first, technological civilization in the Milky Way. But this is just one piece of the puzzle. On top of that, we may have just awesome hit the perfect time window. Why does humanity exist now? The universe is already 13.8 billion years old, but it's unlikely that many other technological civilizations had a chance to appear before us. Because in the earlier universe, life would have had a pretty hard time to emerge, let alone thrive, because it was such a hostile environment. Uh, I each other, and supermassive black holes vomited massive amounts of radiation. So I guess we could talk about this, quasars. This is directly some of the stuff I was looking at uh, when I was doing my PhD in astrophysics. Um, but this isn't actually as big as a problem as he's just made out. These jets, the quasar jets right they're perpendicular uh and galaxies are quite flat you know uh to take for instance the milky way it's a spiral like this one the the, the black hole is nowhere near as big as it's depicted here but this is about a hundred thousand light years across the milky way right it's only about a uh, thousand light years thick though so they're very interesting objects that's a product of conservation of angular momentum just like when you watch some liquid go down the drain, right? Um, but the physics at play here are very, very different, right? You've, these things hold together because of all the dark matter at the edges. You've got these giant dark matter halos, which all of this stuff, the stuff we, we're looking at and can see, the baryonic matter, is gravitationally bound to because of this dark matter, which interacts gravitationally. No other way that we can currently tell. Uh, and these things wouldn't stay together if it was not for this, all this dark matter around here. And... Otherwise, this 
Otherwise, this galaxy would fly apart. The black hole at the center, the supermassive black hole, has a tremendous amount of mass, but it's nowhere near enough amount of mass to keep all of this stuff gravitationally bound. And then the other weird thing is these stars on the edges here, they actually, you know, they should be going around as well, the galaxy at a slower rate. But actually, <laughs> as you go further out, the stars are going faster. That doesn't make any sense according to, you know, Newtonian physics. So that's how we were like, hang on, there must be a lot of mass out here. There's such interesting things, galaxies. But anyway, off topic. So back to these, there's also a, a, like the radio jets of quasars, which do spread out a bit more. But that is, that type of radiation is not really a big problem. And all of this stuff spurs, um, you know, star formation. Um, and we actually also think there's lots of ideas. We, you know, we don't understand galaxy evolution all that well, but... This sort of stuff and the radio jets, uh, you know, can actually kind of quench galaxy formation. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, it can it can stop stars from forming by pushing, you know, all the stuff. Stars come together and they form, you know, due to coalescing matter, right? And then so this stuff can come and push it all away. And so you don't get the gravitational collapse that then forms stars. Um, so it can be a problem, but the quasar jets are usually perpendicular and the radio jets, they don't do all that much. And you also got to keep in mind all of this stuff we're talking about right now. We have lots of ideas, lots of hypotheses in astrophysics, but there's not much evidence for a lot of this stuff, right? All the evidence is actually coming out of computer simulations and we're still waiting, you know, for sort of ex experimental observational validation. This is exactly the stuff I was looking at in when I was doing my PhD, we were looking at early galaxy formation to try and see how some of these galaxies got so big so quickly and quenched and how they how they died and how how the supermassive black holes in the center what they were doing to cause all of this our understanding of all these mechanisms is very primitive and we're probably missing mechanisms because a lot of the stuff doesn't make a lot of sense <laughs> anyway let's get back to the aliens hey enough to sterilize galaxies over and over again our sun was born right at the end of this cosmic death show. The universe has never I think been that's more. That's a terrible name for it. Only really the cosmic death show is, I think, it's like misinformation, basically, which is. Yeah, people are going to really have a problem with me calling it this. So I highly recommend going and doing your own research, right? Because I'm just some person. Cosmic death show? No. No, we do not understand galaxy formation at this time all that well, and thus star formation. And everything that goes into that, okay? So calling the Cosmic Death Show, we do not know enough. Uh, and actually, from what we do know, I don't think it's going to cause, it's going to hinder life from thriving or popping off all that much. It will, for sh probably, to a degree. But to call it the Death Show? No way. I think, um, if anything, life might have actually, it actually could be the opposite. We could actually find that life thrived more during this time. There was more happening, more spurring this, you know, the sparks of life, maybe, and galaxies were closer together. Things were more dense and things were happening. Galaxies were alive. And so maybe you had, you know, even life that ar arose was able to get around easier. I think all the people who think, uh, you know, we're probably the only intelligent species in this universe are just extremely arrogant and they, they're just, uh, it's just wishful thinking essentially because there's a lot of space in this place and um, a lot of room and a lot of places it could arise. So why wouldn't it, right? If we're here, we've arisen uh, why couldn't it arise somewhere else where the conditions are similar? It's just arrogant, it's wishful thinking to think, you know, oh, we're the only things to have ever existed. And, you know, the argument of, you know, but species like our own seem to only be technologically active for maybe a couple hundred years or a few hundred years before it destroys itself. You know, these gr ideas of great filters. Yes, that could be completely true. And, you know, we might be the only active advanced civilization in our galaxy currently potentially but i still don't think so that's not my opinion i think there's probably quite a few and i think people just really don't understand how hard it is to detect advanced civilizations around even our own milky way let alone neighboring galaxies anyway i'm gonna write welcoming to life than it is now so humanity has arrived at a very convenient spot in time maybe the you know, the reason why he's getting at this, though, is because today the galaxies, you know, star formation is is lower on, in general. And, uh, you know, galaxies are starting to quench 
become quiescent. They're starting to die. They're starting to stop forming stars. Uh, and so, you know, we think of this maybe as like a safer time for life to arise, right? Because, this, but I don't think so. So humanity has arrived at a... This really comes down to my assumption, though, that uh, I think life's going to be quite common. So just because a few will get extinguished, no doubt, I don't think that changes anything if life is common. I guess this only matters if life is very uncommon, as in, you know, there's one advanced civilization per galaxy. Yeah, this could be a problem when there's all this activity. and Life than it is now. So humanity has arrived at a very convenient spot in time, maybe the earliest reasonably possible for life to thrive. Yeah, what about the future? The sun burns brighter than 90% of the stars in our galaxy and will keep getting brighter. In about a billion years, it will boil all of Earth's oceans and then become a giant that swallows it whole. Fun times. Fun times so in the galactic context... So if you're worried about your homework, don't worry. Earth's going to be swallowed up whole, potentially, one day. Sun is very short-lived. Most stars are red dwarfs that can sustain habitable planets for tens of trillions of years. Life on these planets has an incredibly long time window to appear and pass the hard steps. Even knowing nothing about how rare or common life is, this makes it way more likely for technological civilizations to appear sometime in the future than in the past. Because if civilizations appear at random in the Milky Way within a time window of a trillion years, then very few, if any, would appear before today. That logic does not hold. We do not know how often civilizations life pop up around the Milky Way. Okay, so I get what he's saying. If you give me a trillion years and they just pop up randomly, we don't know the frequency. Yeah, there's going to be a lot more after today because we've only been here for 13.7 billion years versus 1 trillion, obviously. But they could be everywhere and popping up all the time. So that means before us, there could be even hundreds of thousands, billions, who knows, of civilizations that have already arisen. And so he just said there could be very few or even none. That didn't make any sense. And I that, that logic is silly. You can only say there will be much more after. You cannot say that that means there was none before. We do not know the frequency of life and how like often it arises. We have a sample size of one. We need to be very, 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 very careful of what we think we know and what we can say. We can speculate, but we got to be careful. We know very little. Barely looked. I'm I'm getting so tired of hearing all the people saying like, "Oh, we look, we've looked so hard, we've so, seen nothing." It's like, give me a break, man. We barely looked. We barely spent money on looking. You know, we've only got a couple instruments up in the sky now that even have the ability to look, and their 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 ability to look is limited. And the science to even look is so complicated. There's very few people on this planet who have the ability to do so. Barely live in this period of a billion years that we're in before all star faring civilizations that could ever exist emerge altogether. This weird tsunami like distribution is the result of both the hard steps model and something else. A sort of deadline for any spacefaring civilization. Any civilization coming after will find it hard to have room to survive, so all potential life has to cram in before it. Humanity I disagree exists now because otherwise we might have missed this deadline what or who it might not even be possible to colonize the galaxy we're, we're making a lot of assumptions here i get it we're speculating but we need i think when kurzgesagt does this he, he's got to make it really known what we're assuming and i don't think he's done a great job of letting the audience know of what we're assuming here creates this what? deadline why aren't aliens already on earth I mean, we are aliens, aren't we? Humans are curious, expansionist, and hungry for energy. Do you get what I mean by that? I, I, I simply mean we arose on this planet, okay? Like, um, that's all. And why couldn't it just arise elsewhere? We've spread over the world and made it our own. Our technology has been improving over time, first slowly, then breathtakingly fast. If these things don't change drastically, and our descendants want to prosper, they will expand into space. <laughs> I agree, but the way he framed it, uh, it's like, this is just inevitable if we continue. B but unfortunately, we have now created problems for ourselves. Maybe they were inevitable. 
in which we're going to have to solve, okay, if we want this future. It is not actually a given anymore. <laughs> actually, we are going to run into problems in the future. We need to be able to solve them. Um, so if you want to help create this future, do something about it. You know, go study physics, engineering, computer science. We're going to have to solve climate change in the future. This is a real thing. And, you know, there's a lot of people on this planet who want to pretend like it's not, it's not going to cause any problems. And there are a lot of people on this planet who just want to keep burning fossil fuels and pretend like it's not a finite resource. That's great. Well, you know, those people, let, let, I don't know, we can't do anything about that. So you smart few folk out there, you're going to have to do something about this, all right? You're going to have to try and get up and create things that enable this future and, it, you know, that somehow spur change on this planet. Because where we're heading, it's not looking, this isn't looking possible. Um, there's, there's a bunch of other ones that people don't often talk about. For example, the, you know, the level at which we're decimating wildlife on this planet, if we, and the oceans, the microplastics, you know, if we, if we kill too much life in the ocean, we're doomed. That's where all the oxygen comes from. 70% of it. There is just so many ways in which this big, delicate balance of ecosystems just completely collapses. A trophic cascade. So, you know, whilst I love to be optimistic as well. We need a reality check, all right? You got your dose of optimism from Kersey Zark. Here's your reality check. We need to solve some problems if we want this future. This future is not guaranteed. And unfortunately, right now, there's a lot of stupid people running this fucking show. Stupidity seems to be more common than hydrogen in the universe at the moment. So, you know, you got your dose, your healthy dose of optimism from Kersey Zark. I just wanted to do some real talk for a minute, all right? You know, optimism is great, but optimism alone will not render our future we could construct a dyson swarm for endless energy Absolutely. and transform planets into new homes we could cross interstellar distances Absolutely. allowing us to reach for planets around distant stars of the motivation we can become a galactic civilization yeah. Civilization that does this sort of stuff can be called loud because its activity creates noise signs that can be detected from far away imagine someone in a forest cutting down trees, starting fires, and laying down roads. The more intense their work, the easier they are to notice. An expanding technological civilization would probably be hard to miss. Our telescopes would pick up all that energy. Probably. <laughs> notice the word probably. So this is a commonly held uh, view. And if you're wondering why that's the case, it's because basically everything relies on electromagnetism in terms of baryonic matter, you know, all the stuff we can see and stuff, you know, excluding dark matter and dark energy. Um, so, you know, we electromagnetism is basically why everything works, you know, that you, you, you think that you know of, okay? And so they're probably going to have to use electromagnetism to communicate. There's only four fundamental forces. Electromagnetism is one of them. It's also gravity, right? And we should be able to also detect the gravitational influence if they've got a massive presence. But that's hard because there's a lot of, you know, massive gravitational influences in our little galaxy. So electromagnetism should be the, the best one. But who, who really knows? Um, there could be other fundamental forces we're not even aware of yet, okay? And more advanced civilizations could be using those forces to do things to communicate. If we don't even know about it, how would we detect it, right? So we could be very limited. You know, dark energy, dark matter. We don't know what those things are. They, they could be more fundamental forces to the universe. Advanced aliens could be using these forces that we don't even know about yet. It is completely possible. So, you know, we, we the way we talk about it is very arrogant. Like, we don't know what we don't know. We're, we're not aware of what we're not aware of, right? And there, there's probably a lot that we're not aware of currently, including, in my opinion, other fundamental forces, probably. You know, we know our two pillars of physics, quantum theory and general relativity, are limited, right? They have their limits, which means there's probably something beyond, a deeper framework deeper fundamental view of nature and who knows what is involved in that view potentially more fundamental forces potentially advanced aliens are using those right maybe they're better for who knows why you know dark energy dark matter who knows what those things are they could be involving new fundamental forces and that's why we can't understand it we can't even really get a grip on it in any sense so I just think it's incredibly arrogant for us to look out at this place 
with our few fundamental forces that we know about, with, our, with a few things we know about this place, even though we know they're limited, and to go, nope, there's nothing else out here because they're not using what we currently know about. Like, how arrogant. So, I, And I hope I encourage more people to think this way because it, I don't see it enough on the internet. I see a lot of physicists who just talk about you know, they just use the perspective and they talk about this stuff through the lens of the things we currently know about. You have to invoke uncertainty. There is a lot of uncertainty in what we currently know. And what we currently know, it seems to map and model the universe pretty well, but there are massive problems with it. So large that it could just be that the fundamental framework is completely off, which means there could be lots of interesting other stuff going on that we, we don't even aware of because we're not even, we can't see it. We don't know how to see it etc. So I hope I've encouraged you to be a little bit more humble in terms of, you know, thinking about this stuff. Aliens could be everywhere. They could be around us right now. They could be observing us and we just can't see them. Dark matter, for instance, is going through your body right now. We know it is. It is everywhere. It is all around you. We have no way to detect, detect it other than uh, through gravity. We know it interacts gravitationally. Okay. And that's it. Um, but it is constantly around you, we think. Then then let's not get into what dark energy is. Jesus Christ, that is just, we have no idea if it's even a real thing, really. So yeah, be humble, guys. This ...is that it's very disruptive to the environment. Clearing a forest means the end of it. That all, I hope none of what I just said, though, makes you feel pessimistic in that we can't know any of this stuff. I believe we can. We just need to keep learning, all right? We need to keep investing in science, keep promoting science. People need to keep trying to investigate and I believe we can learn more and potentially hopefully if there's a lot that we're missing un uncover it like a candle in the dark right and AI I think is going to accelerate all of this I hope it's wildlife human activity has left no chance for a squirrel civilization to appear not because we hated squirrels it's simply that the thought that they might want to do that at some point never crossed our minds and we needed wood Similarly, if loud civilizations were running around the galaxy in the past, terraforming planets, or harvesting the energy of stars, they may have prevented our existence. Had aliens started colonizing Earth while we were still sludge in the oceans, that sludge would never have turned into humans. This There's a lot of assumptions going into this one. ...is how loud aliens create a deadline for new civilizations uh, appearing. It's just one line of thinking through which there are many, okay? I, I suspect if there's an advanced species out there that can get around the stars, there's not much reason to do this, all right? They can probably create their own resources for, at this point without the need to sort of take some, you know, little planet's resources. You know, who knows what they're capable of? So um, I think, I get it. They're just extrapolating through the, the current understanding that we currently have. I'm not sure if you had an advanced civilization that was able to colonize the galaxy and just, you know, move around the stars, that it would do this. It might not do this. It might be way smarter than this. It might actually want to, you know, spur life on new worlds and uh, seed it. Maybe that's how life, you know, um, colonizes the galaxy. We just sort of send this little torpedo of life and it, it, like a missile, we launch it into a nearby planet, you know, one that looks like Earth, right? And we're like, we can't get there. So we're just going to send this missile with some, you know, stuff that should eventually, you know, be born and arise into life. Maybe that's how we got here. Maybe there's lots of humans in this galaxy and they've been around for a long time, right? And we were just planted here. This isn't a new idea. This is called panspermia. And that would be called artificial panspermia. There is natural as well. Um, so you see what I'm saying? There's lots of different ideas for what advanced civilizations might do. And keep in mind, all of this, of what we've just done, is looking at it through the lens of human emotion, which I'm not sure is fundamental to the universe. You know, if you don't know much about the universe, you might just want to come at it through that lens of consciousness and whatever the hell that is and human emotion. But... I don't see a reason why human emotion needs to be fundamental at all. It might be, it might not. And so, you know, you should entertain both ideas for sure. But um, who knows? You might have aliens out there that don't have emotions. They might have emotions, but they're nothing like us. They might have very different motivations due to their emotional landscape. And, you know, us trying to understand them is going to be very difficult if that's the case. The galaxy may have trillions of years to create life, 
but there may only be a short window for it to spread and thrive. Maybe. Even if a loud civilization respects planets with naturally occurring life and expands around them, like humans do with wildlife reserves, any civilization on such a planet... But as we don't know about alien civilizations, but if you just take our civilization, for instance, right? And let's just assume that some of them are like us. Well, I think we're, we've gotten this far because of our curiosity. I think that spurs all science, curiosity. Um, and so I think if we were to get to this sort of step where we're doing this much of the galaxy, um, just from if you extrapolate from where we are now, we're at a point where our smart people, our scientists, the ones doing all the advancement... They want to protect all the other life, right? And not only that, we're almost at the stage where we can create other life again. We can bring the dinosaurs back. We can bring mammoths back. We're actually almost at that point. So now if you extrapolate to this far into the future, we probably can do that. And we probably can create anything. Like like a fantasy novel, we might be able to just make things that are allowable by the laws of physics. And so, you know, this sort of view, I think, is rather simplistic of, you know, we don't care about other things and we just eat it all up. It's like we might only we might do that simply because we can make everything. Uh, we might go to another world and see this this new life and be like, ah, oh, we've already simulated all this. Nothing new here. We might go around looking at planets, looking for new life that challenges what we currently know, and s to see if there is anything else. I wouldn't doubt that at this point, if we've made it this far, we can just create, just synthesize what's already there. We might have ran huge, vast amounts of simulations that have already simulated exactly what is on the world and maybe what's even happening. Like, the possibilities are just really kind of mind-breaking. I think a lot of people try and imagine this sort of scenario without realizing, you know, if you're going to extrapolate this far, you need to extrapolate all science and what we are potentially able to do at that point, which, which is, you know, again, mind-breaking. And I think when you do that it basically changes the whole way of looking at these problems with what we may be able to do at these points which is um i think it changes who we are like just look at ai and where we're potentially heading if we're going to shed these biological meat shacks and potentially we might be a model very soon you know if you're able to sort of put consciousness in a some kind of robotic silicon body who knows how long it could survive at that point and not only that you know, if AI does kill us, <laughs> which it might, and uh, then goes and has a look around, who <laughs> it's a very different ball game again, there, isn't it? Ever trapped forever on a tiny island, but here we are. So loud aliens. Did he say trapped forever on a tiny island? I don't think. Um, you know, I think if a, if a species again gets this far around the galaxies, they might be able to. I'm not sure what they're showing here. Is this one galaxy or is this like, you know, the local group? Because um, I think it's one galaxy. So so coming back to this idea, are we going to be limited to the galaxy? Maybe, because between the galaxies, a lot of nothing. But um, again, if you extrapolate, who knows what we'll be able to do by this point. And actually, traveling between the stars might be child's play. Because, you know, if, if you could travel anywhere near the speed of light, uh, actually, you could make the journey in like seconds for you know you, your time you, you wouldn't be able to come back there's no coming back with what we currently understand because a lot of time is going to pass when you travel near the speed of light uh from their reference frame it's like you might have heard you know if you took a 24-hour round trip on a spaceship that traveled very close to the speed of light 100 for a and a, you know 24 hours went by for you well back on earth maybe it depends how close you get to the speed of light thousands of years have gone by be able to expand ever trapped forever on a tiny island but here we are so loud aliens were probably never here what about aliens that don't expand they would be quiet aliens they're probably limited to one star system and don't have a noticeable impact on their cosmic surroundings Humanity maybe they just build vast simulations that are far better and more awesome than the real universe and they just go and live in that that might be where we're heading. We might be heading inwards rather than outwards. And uh, that could explain what the, the F this universe actually is. We could just be in <laughs> simulation of something that's done exactly that. If they stay quiet forever, maybe because of their culture or abilities, then they are not really a concern for us. We only have one sample to draw from, humanity. Maybe. 
And right now, unless we're in their simulation, we are on the path to becoming loud. If we're not special and succeed anyway, I, I disagree. We're, we're actually not on the path to becoming loud because we're on the path to destroying ourselves, actually. And that could be why we don't see other life like us out there in the unit in the in the galaxy, because um, life like us is bound to hit this one great filter that we're arriving at, a.k.a. climate change or, you know, just nuclear war. Then any other civilization with the motivation and resources to would eventually expand beyond its planet of origin. Okay, what are the consequences of all these assumptions and ideas? Grave consequences. Maybe the loud civilizations, you know, running with their idea, yeah, are the ones that always hit these great filters, and the quiet civilizations are the ones that prosper. And so, you know, when we look out there, we shouldn't be looking for Dyson spheres and these huge, you know, vast civilizations, but rather are focusing on tiny little worlds and, you know, seeing uh, some humble activity. <laughs> Consequences. Race to activity. the stars. If we are really early, then eventually others will catch up with us. Civilizations will emerge all over the place, and these new aliens will look at space, see no signs of life, and come to the same conclusion. They exist because loud civilizations have not yet taken over everything, but it only takes one loud civilization to crash. But you really can't know that that hasn't already happened, and. <laughs> So I don't like this argument. It doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. You can't know. Add them out of the entire galaxy. They, like us, will face an important decision. Do they stay quiet, take it easy, and tend to their planet for as long as possible? I think this whole idea of quiet versus loud civilizations is a little bit simplistic. Or do they start expanding to take a chunk of the galaxy before someone else arrives? Meeting others does not necessarily mean war or conflict, but it means that new borders will arise, limits that may persist forever. In the worst case, a civilization could be completely enveloped by the empires of others eternally. Don't you love how we anthropomorphize everything? Like, you know, just imagining if there are other civilizations, there's going to be borders because we have borders on this planet. I don't think so, okay? Yeah, maybe, but <clears throat> highly doubt it. I imagine any civilization that's able to travel across the stars are going to be far smarter than what we currently are. At least I fucking hope. And I just think it's wishful thinking in like a negative, pessimistic way to think there's going to be borders. It might be a bit more like these super advanced aliens are like, look, just travel wherever you want. Just leave us alone, you know, and <laughs> we'll leave you alone. Who knows? Maybe well, it's do. all about sharing in this place. You know, the whole Encyclopedia Galactica and... I think that's far more likely for intelligent things out there. Um, why would you want to be alone, you know, with your silly little lone species? Why wouldn't you want other interesting things to... Again, I'm anthropomorph... I'm looking at... I'm mapping my own nature onto nature, for sure. But that's all I can really do. <laughs> and from the people that I know who are doing physics and engineering, the ones who want to get out there, they're nothing like a, a, what a lot of people seem to assume which is you know we just want to expand and conquer i don't want to conquer i don't want to ex even necessarily expand i just want to see what what's out there and um help other things prosper and help things suffer less it's to be a galactic backwater without control over their fate so if we want a seat at the galactic adults table we best get to work if we really Encyclopedia are a galactic early we have an incredible opportunity to mold thousands or even millions of planets according to our vision and dreams. And one day when we meet others, we can greet them and meet them as equals. Wouldn't that be nice? These amazing- Anyway, that was a great video. Make sure you come check out AI My Interior and I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe.